And we're going to talk a little bit more about nuclear physics. And in particular, we're going to talk about the alpha decay and the amount of energy released in an alpha decay. So what is an alpha decay? Well, first of all, there's a lot of heavy elements like uranium-238. And by the way, when we say uranium-238, what we mean is that the nucleus has 238 nucleons, which is a combination of protons and neutrons, and 92 protons. So if you subtract 92 from 238, which is, looks like 146, that's the number of neutrons you have in the nucleus. And those are very unstable nuclei, and once in a while they, they eject a particle. In this case, they eject an alpha particle, which is basically the nucleus of a helium atom. It has two protons and four nucleons, which means it also has two neutrons. So what particles then being created? Well, if we subtract two from 92, we get 90. And if we subtract 4 from 238, we get 234. And a nucleus that has 90 protons in it has to be thorium. So this is an isotope of thorium, which, by the way, is also radioactive. But we won't get into that now. And of course, in, in addition to that, a certain amount of energy is being released. The question is, how much energy is released? And well, that comes from the difference in the mass of the initial nucleus, which is uranium-238, and the sum of the two masses here making up the thorium and the alpha particle. So to the right here, I have written down the atomic mass of the uranium-238, of the thorium-234, and of an alpha particle. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to add these two together, which is the total mass of the right side of the equation, subtract that from the top number here, and the difference in the mass, which is called the mass defect, will then be the amount of energy that's released because in, an, in a reaction like this, an alpha reaction or an alpha decay, energy is released when something breaks down into its daughter products like that. And that's something the energy release is equal to the mass equivalent energy of the difference between those two, which is called the mass defect. All right, let's get to it. So if we add these two together, what do we get? We get 9, 9, 1, 1, 6, uh, 4, 0, 238, whoop, 238, and you can see that this number right here, which is the sum of these two masses, is less than that mass right there. So if we now subtract this from that, and let me do that over here, so we have uh, the 238.050783 atomic mass units, which is the mass of the a nucleus or the mass of the uranium atom and we subtract from that 238.046199 atomic mass units which is a sum of the mass of the alpha particle and of the thorium uh, atom if you subtract those two I guess I don't really need a calculator that's 13 minus 9 is 4 that's 17 minus 9 which is 8 that's 6 minus 1 which is 5 that's 10 minus 6, which is 4, and that would be 0, 0, 0, point 0. And so this is the, what we call the delta M, or also known as the mass defect, the mass lost by this nuclear reaction, this decay reaction. All right, so how do we find the energy then? Well, we can do it in two ways. First of all, we can think of it in terms of E equals mc squared. And so what we have to do then is plug, plug this m in here and calculate the energy released. So let's do that first. Of course, before we, convert, before we can plug that in, we have to convert that to kilograms. And the conversion to kilograms, first of all, uh, that would be um, conversion to grams and atomic mass units. And one gram is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atomic mass units. And then converting that to kilograms, one kilogram versus grams, and one kilogram is 1,000 grams. So if we're going to convert this into kilograms, let's go ahead and do that. So we have 0 0.004584 divided by 6.022 e to the 23rd divided by 1,000 equals, and we get a mass defect of 7.612 times 10 to the minus 30th kilograms. We go ahead and plug that in here, and so now we have the energy released as 7.612 times 10 to the minus 30th kilograms. And then multiply times c squared, of course c is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared. Okay, if we now calculate that, so times 9e to the 16th equals, and so we have an energy release of 6.85 
times 10 to the minus 13 joules. Now, typically, we convert that to uh, electron volts. In particular, when we, all, when we talk about nuclear decay like that, it's typically in million electron volts. So the conversion to electron volts, so one electron volts to uh, joules, one electron volt is a 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So divide that number by 1.6 e to the 19 minus, and we get this is equal to 4,282,000 electron volts. And so that's why we usually convert it to million electron volts. So this is equal to uh, 4.28 MeVs million electron volts. So that's the energy release by that particular reaction. Now, there's actually an easier way to do that. It turns out that if we convert one atomic mass unit to energy, and of course we've already done that calculation, that means we end up with 931.5 MeVs. So the easy way to convert atomic mass units to energy is simply by taking this number and multiplying it times this conversion. So the uh, energy released is equal to the um, 0 0.004584 atomic mass unit, which is the energy lost, multiplied times 931.5 MeVs per atomic mass unit. So notice then that the atomic mass unit cancels out, and then you're left with energy in terms of MeVs. So if we do it this way, it'll be 0 0.004584 times 931.5 equals, and in this case, we get 4.27 MeVs. We can see that's practically the same number. I'm sure we have a small little runoff error somewhere, which we don't worry about too much. It's only uh, one in the third dis uh, digit, so we're good. And you can see that you can find the energy released in two ways. You probably like this way better, but you can also see that it can be done using the E equals MC squared equation. And that's how you look at alpha decay and how much energy is released in one of those decay processes.